The Engineer's Skill The characteristics of the Engineer's Skill are it's a prism-shaped tool. As you can see here, it has six different sides. This is one side, and this is another. That's two, three, four, five, and six. The first graduation of an engineer scale is a zero mark. Let me go back to that. Notice that it starts with a zero on both ends. It's divided into decimal intervals of an inch, and the six faces of the prism have the following dimensional ratios. 1 to 10, 1 to 20, 1 to 30, 1 to 40, 1 to 50, and 1 to 60. A few things that we need to know is that the number printed by the number zero is the amount of intervals in one inch. In this case, we have a 10 printed there. So if we count 10 units, that would be one inch. In this case, if it says 50, if we were to count all the little intervals there, once we would get to five, that would be a total of 50, and therefore that would be one actual inch. 20, where 20 intervals are, that's one full inch. Okay. Since engineers use drawing scales that are decimal, 1 to 30, 1 to 40, 1 to 50, etc., that means that that would represent feet. So, for example, 1 inch equals 30 feet. So I will use the side of the scale that has a 30 printed on it. And I would know that where the 3 would be, for that would be my one actual inch, which represents the 30 feet. In reality, a 30 should be printed here, but for purposes of saving space and not getting too messed up when the numbers become larger, we minimize the trailing zeros. Where the three is, we know that that's 30. I read the ruler and then multiply that by, in this case, 10 because to make a 3 a 30, I need to multiply it times 10. So all the measurements here, I would have to multiply whatever the reading is times 10. So let's look at the reading for this line here. Uh, that's 3. If I count them, is 1 less than 4. So that's 3.9. 3.9 times 10 equals 39. So that would be 39 feet. In this case here, the reading is 8.4 times 10 equals 84, means 84 feet. To read the engineer scales, I follow the next steps. This line will represent the line that is in the drawing. And then uh, we're going to play with different drawing scales. Let's begin with one inch equals 10 feet. The side of the scale that I'm going to use is the one that has 10 printed on it. I have also included this box that represents the length of an actual inch. So if I move this to each one of my scales, uh, you will see that it actually does reflect um, the actual inch. Actually, I'm going to just copy this. If I was to move this to this scale, notice that the distance between each unit is one actual inch. If I was to move it to this side of the scale, I'm going to just place it here just for a little bit, about there. I'm also going to place one here and one last one here. So you see the scale of 50, that means that if I was to count every little marking here, once I get to 50, this is where the five would be, and that is an actual inch. See that? Now in this case, if I count all my markings where 30 is, because 30 is printed before the zero, then that would mark my actual inch. And the same with here, 60, so where the six would be, the 60 equal intervals, and that would actually be my one inch mark. Okay, so just remember, 
that in engineer scales, whenever you see a 50, a 30, a 60, a 10, whatever the number is, that is the actual number of markings that there are in one inch. Okay, so let's begin. My drawing scale is one inch equals 10 feet. I will use the side of the ruler that says 10. And where I get to the zero, that would actually be 10, 10 feet, right? My multiplier will be one, one times what makes 10. So that would be 10. So I'm just going to write times 10 here. Okay, I'm ready to measure. I grab my scale. I move it to zero, line it up, and this line is approximately 3, 3.12345678. And so that would be 3.75. Okay, so that's my reading times my multiplier. My answer is 37.5 feet. Let's say that my drawing scale is 1 inch equals 500 feet. So I immediately go to the side of the scale that says 50. If 5 is printed here, but I need that 5 to become a 500, my multiplier would be 100 because 5 times 100 equals 500. Okay, so I know that that's the side of the scale that I need to use. So I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to flip it 180 degrees, and put it against my line. The actual reading for this is 18, this would be 19, 18.5, let's just pick one line here. So five, six, seven, let's say it's eight. 18.8 .8 times my multiplier, right? Let's not forget that. And that would equal 1,880 feet. Okay, we're going to move to the green now. One inch equals three feet. So I'm going to grab the side of the scale that has 30, where three would be printed here. That would be one actual inch. Let's remember that. So let's determine the multiplier. If I need this three to become a three, there's no multiplier. Or the multiplier would actually be one. Right? So we really don't have to multiply that. Now I'm going to move my scale, put it against my line, and uh, it reads 11, let's call this 11.2. I know it's two and a half. Uh, let's do two and a half. So 11.25. Okay, so my reading was 11.25. Since my multiplier is 1, I don't have to do anything to that number. So that would be 11.25 feet. Okay, now we have 1 inch equals 6,000 feet. The side of the ruler I am using is the 60. Remember that where the 6 is, that represents 1 actual inch. My multiplier for that is 1,000. So I'm going to move my scale, 22.5. So 22 times my multiplier, and that equals to 22,500 feet. And that's how you read the scale.
if it becomes a little difficult for you to determine the multiplier, I have included a table to aid you in figuring out what the multiplier is. So let's say in the assignment you have something that has a drawing scale of 1 inch equals 400 feet. So look it up on the table here. And you know that you're going to use the side of the ruler that has a 40 included in there. And that the multiplier is 100. 